an interesting debate in our control room and in our uh, 5 a.m. meeting here on Up and Adams. Uh, and welcome to the show and happy Monday. Uh, we have to start with Sunday Night Football, right? We have to, that's the game everybody wants to talk about. Ooh. This is one of those mornings you wake up and you're like, oh, we really want to talk about the 11 to 10 Broncos win, the sloppiest game that I've seen in a, a long time. Jimmy G, who I defend <laughs> relentlessly throughout my NFL career and here on the show, he was awful. We saw a bad offense and good defense. I don't want to start my show like this. I don't want to start my show uh, lambasting the play by the Niners and the play calling by Kyle Shanahan. Jimmy, 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 Jimmy. Jimmy made some terrible mistakes. Broncos defense deserves some credit. But Jimmy, Jimmy never should have thrown that ball. Midfield, first down, a little bit of pressure forces it into triple coverage. I can't. I can't defend him. Throw the ball away, Jimmy. The Broncos were sloppy. It was not cute. But I will say this. They are buying themselves some time. They are learning and accepting and growing as they win ugly. I appreciate a team that can win ugly. Uh, I mean, 9-3 and out, that's about as ugly as you can get. Now, I think Russell is going to figure it out. There's just so much talent on this team. There was less Hackett drama. They brought in that guy. It all seems to be working. Uh, and so I'm, I'm less worried about the Broncos. Tougher division, of course, tough sledding, but so much talent on that team. The Jimmy side of things, I mean, woof is all I can say. And speaking of woof, we'll uh, play some panic and patience on some of the losing teams in a bit. Raiders fans, 0-3. The numbers are not cute. We looked them up this morning, of course. Uh, so we'll get into all of that. We'd love to hear from you, of course, on uh, the show Twitter handle at Up and Adams Show. Week three, all about close games. Like I said, 10 to 14 were by one score, which is wild. My takeaways are as follows. Number one, I think the AFC South is a bit spicier than we think, everybody. The AFC South went 3-1 and one on Sunday, taking care of the AFC West, the one that we call and crown the most exciting division in the league. Colts take care of the Chiefs, Jags over Chargers, Titans beat the Ra Raiders, and the Texans fall to the Bears. Hey, go Bears, by the way. Uh, but I want to give some love to the Jags team to start the show. How about that? Only here will that happen. They sit atop the AFC South. They're 2-1. and one. They snapped an 18-game road losing streak with this 38-10 win over the Chargers. I got to tell you there a hell of a fun watch. This team scored 38 points yesterday. Trevor Lawrence stringing together for the first time I've ever seen back-to-back -back wins. He was looking sharp. He had two good games in a row. The offense is so fun. James Robinson, great. Travis Etienne, he's getting involved. They put him in at Wildcat. He's out, out there being quarterback. So, so fun. Keep it up. Zay Jones, Christian Kirk, they were scoring touchdowns. They combined for 157 yards and two touchdowns yesterday. And the defense is good. I see you. Now, we will talk to Lyra Overton, uh, who I became best friends with over the weekend about the Colts, but I said it. I hung out with these guys, all the Colts players, as you guys all saw, I got pied in the face. They had a nice uh, uh, fundraiser kicking the stigma, and I flew out to Indianapolis, and I'm playing Papa Shot with these guys, and it's Matt Ryan, and it's Unique Ngakwe, and it's Grover, and it's, you know, Julian Blackman, uh, uh, and all these players, and I'm just saying, you guys are going to be okay. It's, it's Shaquille Leonard, me saying, I think you might win. I don't know if Kansas City's prepared for this. If they had a long time to prepare for it, I, th I think they might be counting you out. I'm talking to DeForest Buckner, an emotional game for him, of course, and they pulled it off. They upset KC 20 to 17. They are now one and one and one. And Matt Ryan did exactly what I would tell him to do, what I would do if I was a quarterback myself. I would do the same mind-numbing eight-minute drive that he strung together, 16 plays, 76 yards uh, in the fourth quarter. Keep the ball out of my Holmes hands, always a great idea. So the Colts held the Chiefs to 315 total yards. That very, rarely, very rarely happens. And Matt Ryan looked good. And so I'm happy that they got their thing done, too. Titans pick up a win, too. Gotta love that. Uh, their first win of the season over the Raiders. Derrick Henry, I think, looked the best that he has. He's still averaging a career low, 3.6 yards per carry this season. I'd like that to improve. But I see you. The AFC West, listen, the South is coming for you. 3-0 against the West this week. Eagles and Dolphins deserve some love to start the show. I couldn't be happier about this. I stood up here and I said, Eagles are going to go and win the division and make it really deep into the playoffs. And then uh, A.J. Brown's going to be this huge addition. And then I said sort of the same thing about the Dolphins. They're going to shut everyone up and Tua is going to do that. And now, lo and behold, both 3-0, the only two undefeated teams teams in the thing. And the Eagles have held a lead of at least 17 points in all three games this season. That is dominance. If that can continue, and if they can, if they can sack quarterbacks like they did yesterday to Carson Wentz nine times, Ferris Bueller style, nine times, they're going to go places. And then there's the Dolphins. My goodness, a win over the Bills. 
the that's about as impressive as you can get. And to me, it's that they're winning in different ways, right? That's what we have to pay attention to. I like teams that are able to do that. I like teams that can win ugly. And I like teams where last week it was the offense and it was Tua going through the air and putting up six touchdowns. Yesterday, it was all about the defense. It is this whole team coming together to do their thing. My last takeaway for now, what a buzzkill. Let's get Conrad in here. Aaron Rodgers versus Brady. This is just not what you expect Conrad to see. Packers and Buccaneers combined for just 26 points in yesterday's meeting. I what you know, they had more turnovers in yesterday's game than touchdowns, four to three. Oh, I know it. I know it. I uh, again, first time in a long time, drafted Tom Brady this year. I know no one cares about that, but I watched that game very intently and I have never seen Tom Brady struggle like how he struggled yesterday. It was very hard to watch. Yeah. Every time it seemed like they got a drive going, they fumbled. And it was, it was, it was a very sloppy game. This was the worst game I've seen between two surefire Hall of Famers yeah. in my entire life watching football. Well, Aaron's not clicking with his receivers. I tried to blame the Heat about it. Everyone's like, you were wrong. I mean, it was, was it was it that Rodgers was great and defeated the Heat or that Brady just, you know, come on, play, played a little worse? Like, yeah. that, that was the situation in my head. Uh, no points in the second half for Aaron Rodgers. That's nope. weird. On the Brady side, that two-minute drive, the late time, all of it was weird. No one was open the whole game. That's what I kept seeing. Uh, luckily, Bucks will have... Mike Evans back, which we'd be super excited to see, yep. of course. So I'm not panicking on I them, and you are, or you wouldn't. I would, I would panic on Tampa Bay. I mean, listen, I know they don't have Godwin. I know they don't have Mike Evans. He's coming back from suspension. But when you saw this offense play, like he was using Cameron Brait yesterday, like he was using Gronk ten years ago. Yeah. I mean, Cameron Brait, I. That's a name that I that hasn't been relevant I've, in my opinion in the last couple seasons. He hasn't been used as much. They've had other tight ends there, and. It's, he was like the only guy that could get open. I mean, they brought in Cole Beasley last minute. Cole Beasley tried doing what he could, but it got to the point where I think— He had one good catch, right? One good catcher, but yeah. He did, he did, but like Tom towards the end of the game— We were hearing he's going to be so heavily involved. It's going to be Cole Beasley everywhere. Those are the reports. Yeah, but at the same time, like I think Tom Brady's like anger like completely mm -hmm. folded over in the fourth quarter where like he was just like, wow— this is what this is. Like, he wasn't yelling. He wasn't screaming. He was taking bad sacks, and he was just getting up, looking over at the sidelines like, somebody, like, anybody help me? And it was it was hard to watch. It really was. It was a very hard game to watch. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, Packers have who this week? They have a gimme game against New England, I think. Yeah. Back at home. Yep, so yep. we'll see. What's your background talking about today? Uh, my background, I mean, listen, I mean, Come on, those Dolphins. More, more so than anything, watching that Dolphins game against the Bills, extremely impressive. And, you know, just kind of like you talked about Aaron Rodgers having to go down to that, uh, that Florida heat, the Bills going down to South Florida was a very big issue for them. I mean, Stephon Diggs was cramping up every 10 minutes. Yeah. He couldn't stay on the field. Josh Allen throwing the ball 60 plus times. You told me this. You said last week, because I was trying to, I was throwing my, you know, I was trying to get my ideas together. And you and I spent an, an, an awful, awful lot, lot of time, time together. together this weekend, <laughs> which we'll have to get into at some point. But you and I bonded. But even before we left for Indianapolis, I told you that there's something about Florida. And you couldn't agree more. I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, there there was a big difference. I mean, growing up, I played a lot of sports in my life, has a lot of friends from Florida that came up north and ended up playing some level of college football up in Ohio. And the biggest difference to them always was, like, there is no way a lot of these guys on my team up here in the north could yeah. have made it through those practices down in Florida because they are. They're excruciating. Yeah. They're, it's it's a different breed of athlete that comes from Florida, Texas. It's It, it really is. It's unbelievable. The, the fact that they can play in these conditions and that they can continue to stay on the field is Probably one of the more impressive things in football that not a lot of people talk in about. In Miami, those players are used to it. They're training down there. They get it. I've always, you know, there's always been a lot of lines you can cross and point from New England having to travel down there late in the season, early in the season, and the lack of success they have coming from New England where they're used to those conditions. But um, we did at least get in this Dolphins game the butt punt. <laughs> the butt punt. I, 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 I know somewhere we have the butt punt, and look at this. This was magical. I mean, this was only this is one of two plays historically yesterday that, you know, Mark Sanchez now is no longer the lead person for uh, the butt fumble. It's now the butt punt. Butt punt is in in 2022. The Why butt fumble is out. Why should I care about the butt punt? Well, the butt punt, honestly, was probably one of the most crazy things because it couldn't have worked out any better for Miami when it happened. I mean, to run into your own player in the back of the end zone and for this to happen, but the fact that Miami's defense was able to stifle them on the last possession with Josh Allen trying to lead him back, uh, it wasn't it wasn't great. But look wow. at this. I mean, what an amazing photo. 
How often do you see stuff like this happen in the NFL? NFL account saying, is this the greatest photo of all time? What a question. Oh, and Hit Charmin. Us up. Char oh. Charmin, these cheeks are going to need something soft. Check the DMs. You got to love it. Look at this. Some Ale branding happening. Mark Sanchez, whoa, 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 whoa. Stay out of my lane, bro. <laughs> That's Thomas Morstead. We love to see it. We love uh, some joshing in the NFL. Talk, talk to me about the other thing you saw. Oh, here's Tyreek Hill. I've never seen a butt pump, but next time, Sherfield's going to catch it with his butt cheeks because he's got <laughs> strong butt cheeks. Um, I think I took a nap during this. I was not, I was not around for butt, sweet, butt cheek Charmin Twitter. I was around for last night's. I don't, you know, I want to love Jimmy G. Ugh. The safety, break it down. I mean, listen, I know we had the safety play too, but the fun thing about this safety is, and which a lot of people won't give credit for, Jimmy G actually made the right play here. I mean, they end up losing the game, but he threw a pick six on this play. He stepped through the back of the end zone, which, I mean, Orlowski. Dan Orlowski was probably. He we was He him. was hands down the darling of Twitter last yeah, night. Yeah, Tariko got that out real quick. Look at this. I've Freedom. never been happier. Freedom. I mean, Orlowski has been seeing these tweets for what? The last 10 years? Yeah. Oh. I think Orlowski's OK. You're doing OK, buddy. You're crushing it over at ESPN. We love to see it. Step Brothers. Very cute. Very cute. It was. Not, not great photoshops. Looks like a horror movie. Little face off Don Travolta action, Nick Cage, but that's OK. Uh, big news yesterday. How oh. casual Apple Music and the NFL to during a nine game slate just throw out there that Rihanna's, that Rihanna's doing the Super Bowl halftime show. And can I tell you, I can you think of a Super Bowl halftime that you've been more excited to see? I I literally yesterday when it happened was like over the moon excited. Rihanna to me is probably a top five artist in my opinion. I love Rihanna so much. I mean, LeBron obviously loves it as well. But who doesn't love Rihanna? Like, she's been gone the last, what, five years, basically? Well, she hasn't been gone. She's been busy launching busy, a, you're right. a lingerie empire, uh, Savage Fenty, and, of course, Fenty makeup, which, if you saw what I looked under here, you would understand <laughs> how important my Fenty contour stick is. And my lip gloss. I lose her gloss balm every day of my life. Really? She's but an incredible businesswoman. I've been saying, and she gets asked this on every red carpet every for the past five years, new music, yeah. question mark? Like, can we get... And so you got to think... You gotta think we're getting a new album here. Don't you dare do this months. to me, Kay what Adams. Do you mean? No, don't, don't. don't. Why would they? Why would they? Why would they come to the conclusion that it's her, instead of somebody that has new music, a la a Harry Styles or you know? It does. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who you get. Rihanna. Rihanna is gonna bring the bangers no, from the past. Oh, I mean, regardless. She will, but she's gonna have new music. Watch. I mean, if she comes out with new music, then I mean, can consider this the best halftime show ever for me. Yeah. Ever. She could, I mean, she could bring out Chris Martin from Coldplay. She could bring, I mean, she's done collabs with, she can bring out Jay-Z. That would be fun to watch. Now that would be something. She's done, she's done with Eminem. She's done it all. She's she done has. it all with everyone. So congratulations to NFL fans for getting the gift that will be Rihanna oh. for 12-ish minutes in Arizona when the Eagles are facing the Bills. The I Super cannot Bowl. wait for it, Kay Adams. Last little one, Riri. Last one for you because you are my oh. eyes and ears, all things Seahawks. This is I it. I did not see this. And Play I don't it. think I care. So oh. break it down. Kay, look at this corgi race. I look. don't care. I, I, I know you don't, Kay, but the world cares. Every, look at this. We, we, we have a on the loose corgi after an amazing corgi race and during like one of the breaks in the Seahawks game. I mean, me personally, you know how big of a dog I am. This literally brought me a smile ear to ear yesterday. I just thoroughly cannot get enough of this and they couldn't catch the corgi. I mean, come on, what's, what's better than that? Having a bunch of people trying to catch a dog and at the same time too in the Seahawks game, happened against the Huskies too. There was a drone over the stadium? They I had can't. You lost me five minutes. You're literally, you literally lost my attention the second. Oh, all right. Well, it's we'll, over. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll get off the it's corgis It's over. Then. Love you. We're done with the corgis.